So all of those clicks that someone is manually doing, yeah, automated. Holy smokes, I gotta save a <laughs> bunch of time. <laughs> Welcome to the Million Dollar Sellers Podcast. I'm your host, Nick Chouquette. Today, we're uh, doing something a little new. We've got a co-host on the show, Rolando Rosas. What up, what up? I'm ready for you today. I'm nice, man. Yeah. I brought out some new sound effects just for today. I've been I've been uh, excited to do this with you, Ro. This is the first episode, uh, me and you doing this little like like side thing, man, where we're gonna bring real talk from million dollar sellers to our listeners and let them know how we deal with problems in the business. Uh, so I, I mean, a hundred percent, because you know you're like me, you're you're out there talking to other folks, you're consuming media, you're consuming podcasts from other people, you know, you know, in the space and. You hear all the rosy stuff, like I'm crushing it here and I'm crushing it there. And this one's doing this and this hack here and this hack there. And that is all true. And that's good to know. But, you know, we don't really get like the nitty gritty. This is, yeah. Yeah, this is, hold up. Somebody else wants to jump in here. He wants to say one, two, three, four, five. Real life. This is real life. Oh, man. I like it. A little DJ Khaled action. DJ right. Khaled. This is real life. And so. We're just going to share some of the struggles. I, that's what I want to do is share some of the struggles, you know, also some good stuff. You, you went on yeah. vacation recently, which is great. You, you know, for me, it took me years from when I started the business to get to vacationing again, like I was when I had my own corporate job. And, you know, I'm yeah, Fourth of July, I'm gone, right? Christmas, bye bye. See you guys later. And then once you open up your own shop, your own business, you're just like, oh, I'm going to have to put off on that vacation for a while. And then it was great to be able to be like, I know that if I'm not sitting at the desk, that it's not going to all fall apart. And I think folks that have an Amazon based business or an e-commerce based business, we can all get there. We just may need to put some things in place in order for you to go on, on your break. Cause I'd love to hear right. how it went. Yeah, man. And I'll, I'll kind of dive into to that and kind of like where I was at right before. Um, because like you said, you start your own business and you start, maybe you start working more, right? You start skipping the holidays. Indeed. Um, and, and it's kind of a disservice, right? Like you really do need to get out of the way let your team do things, let your team struggle a little bit. Uh, Cause that's, I know for me, what I got into it for, like it was the lifestyle that e-commerce offered me. And before I went to Indonesia, I was very hands-on doing daily huddles and I'm on multiple level tens and um, I'm really driving the operations uh, daily and wearing myself out, <laughs> honestly. You know, that um, those little things, you know, that just like what you're talking about, the daily huddles, you know, something that made us a big difference for me that there was a, a, a study that came out from Microsoft recently, and it looked at people that worked from home and had huddles or back to back meetings. They found that those were really bad for your yeah. mind and bad for you as a person. And that as simple as building in an extra five to 15 minutes in between meetings, as well as taking a five minute break. All of these teeny, like, like, cause you know, you probably get in the zone and you're like back to back, I gotta knock it all out. And you got six back to back meetings and you do that for weeks at a time. You're just like, yeah, you know, you're like, uh oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I was going to say, and you don't have any time to reflect on what you're doing. No, no, you don't, you don't. And, and, and you feel the weight and the pressure and you know, it, if you're selling products, doesn't really matter what category you're in, whether it's supplements or electronics or otherwise, selling products is not an easy thing when you want to get to the top of the mountain. If you right. just high tussle and you're selling, you know, a couple hundred bucks on the weekend and that's all you want to do, not a problem. But if you really want to turn that into, you know, seven or eight figure business, there's no like phoning it in for an hour a day. That's just not right. going to happen. And to be able to do that, where you could take a break, yeah, you gotta give yourself the space, the mind, 
And I think we're starting to see more and more studies come out about just the mindset and the mind and what it takes to be in it for the long term so that you don't burn out. Because I did. I want to throw in it. I was about to throw the towel in myself. Yeah. You know, because I was completely burnt out. Yeah, man, I, I can relate 100 percent. And it affects everything in your life. You know, your marriage, your relationship with your children, your relationship with your friends, your relationship with yourself. Uh, and when when all that's off track, you're really not even doing that well at work, probably, or at least not as good as you could be. And I think that's the ticket, right? It's like it's like wondering what it's like to sleep eight hours when you only sleep five. You know, you don't know until you actually do it. Right. No, exactly. You know, something else that um, at the beginning of this year, the you know, I had like a, uh, I had a little bit of a medical scare. And so one of the things that I didn't realize was that, um, that I just wasn't as active as I thought I was. I, in my okay. brain, I figured I'm active because I'm busy and I'm doing things. I have a dog and I have a little toddler. And so I'm active, but uh, when I went and got a one of these slow step counter things, I realized, oh, I'm only like getting a thousand steps. And oh, all God. of the studies coming out saying you really need anywhere between six to 10,000 steps a day in order to, you know, stay healthy. That's just walking, right? And I'm like, wow, I didn't realize because you're again, you're so self-absorbed in your own world that you think you think you're busy because your mind's busy, but your body and paying attention to that, you know, really it may pay dividends. I lost a couple pounds. I started feeling better. Had a little more energy. I wasn't like nose diving when it gets to two or three o'clock in the afternoon. A lot of us right. like get to that and then boo, you feel like you're falling off a cliff. You can kind of get right through that to like get to like five thirty. My, my son comes in and he's like, Dada, it's quitting time. I'm looking up, I'm looking at the clock like, oh, you're right. Yeah. It's quitting time. Rather than S feeling like, oh, it is quitting time. So, you know, I think uh, a lot of listeners will start to resonate with this. You know, they'll probably start to realize like, okay, maybe I should think about dialing it back. But what about results? Right. Like, let's talk about some things we have been able to accomplish by letting our hands off the wheel. You know, I just came back from Indonesia. I was there like almost four weeks and I didn't do anything. Uh, I was ignoring Slack messages left and right. Right. Like, Did the house <laughs> fall apart? Did the business fall apart? You know, it, it didn't. And and things are moving along just fine. The team ran into some problems, but they figured it out on their own while some things came to light of, you know, people and situations that did not and some bad decisions that were made, which is actually a good thing as well, because you get to see maybe you need to get rid of someone. Mm, you know, maybe someone that's needs also some a good thing. That's also right. good where you find the holes. Right. So, you know, just since I've been back, we we uh, wrapped up a project to fully automate reviewing wholesale catalogs where I, all the clicks that someone's doing on a Chrome page, oh. we just automated all of them and they're looking at an output sheet. And, instead and this of doing is on research. your own website or... This is for reselling on Amazon. So we get a catalog from a supplier mm -hmm. and usually we would, you know, take the UPC code, go right. to Amazon, search it, find the product, analyze the profits based on the cost of goods and sales volume and all that stuff. So all of those clicks that someone is manually doing, yeah, automated. Holy smokes, I got to save a <laughs> bunch of time. <laughs> Yeah, it's going to save hours. And instead of hiring more people, which leads to more managing, we've empowered an employee in the business who has done well for many years, right? So it's like a game that. changer. It is a game changer. Yeah. That is a um, huge game, especially if you so. So if you're, hold up a second. I'll like that. There's a, I have something for that. <laughs> Get ready for a pro tip. All right, Nick. Yes. That just sounds tip. like a pro tip to me if I ever heard one. Yeah. You know, and, and what I did was I set this up and this is what I'm good at. I have an idea. I have a vision. I see something that can be possible. I set the stage for it. I hand it off. And that middle part, all that like execution and research and troubleshooting, 
you let the team do that. Mm. And then you come back and you finish up the extra 10%, right? Like I think, you know, Gary V did a video, it was like 1080-10 or something, right? Like, you know how those guys always come up with some framework, but it's really that. It's he like, said something about that. He's like, the as an owner, and to me, I struggle with this part. Like, I know what it takes to get X done, and I want yeah. it done all the way up to 100, right? 100%. But Gary says, you know, you're probably going to get about 80. Yeah. Most of the time out of an employee, right? Mm -hmm. They're not going to be like you and I, which is, uh, let me look for that the extra thing that's missing. Let me tie this piece to that. Oh, yes. Yes, right. I found it. Right? No, they're not going to do that. Generally. Yeah. And he says, that's probably as good as it's going to get. And you got to accept that. And I have a hard time accepting that. Yeah, you know, and I, I do too. I think it's it's those things that I do like pushing myself to go on a trip and, you know, be, we were in the uh, Mentawai Islands, like didn't even have a cell phone service for like four days. Were your people flipping there. out when they couldn't get a hold of you and, or were they already I knew, I'm going to be in care. the middle of nowhere, so <laughs> don't flip out. Yeah, you know, they knew I was going to be gone, but um, I think at the end of the day, it really depends like what type of people do you want working for you? You know, do you want the type of people who are going to flip out when you can't give them an immediate answer or do you want the people who go and figure it out on their own? Mm -hmm. Uh, and I know I need, I need the people that are going to go out and figure it out on their own because I'm in this to build a lifestyle that I can pursue what makes me happy, pursue what makes my wife happy and spend time with my kids. Right? Like that's why I'm, I'm in it. It's not for the money. Right. Well, if, if, if the business you're doing can give you that, then, you know, you are a winner, right? Yeah. And, you know, so you said something about the people, something that really changed my mind. Um, it was at the beginning of the year, we hired somebody that I, uh, you know, I, we hired her for a specific task and she's such a go-getter. She is, she assumed the role of somebody else. We had to let go of somebody and, uh, and she took over that role. And we brought somebody else to replace the first role that she was in. But what I learned in that whole Michigas was that hiring people solely specifically based on their skill set, especially if you're looking at virtual employees, is kind of a mistake because this mm -hmm. person had such a good attitude about learning, adapting, doing new tasks that it really changed my mind on I've got to focus more for me like what you said, resiliency, adaptability. I'm not going to be around to give you everyday guidance. Here's what I'd expect. You do it. And really set the stage for like, hmm, maybe we have been hiring not the right way here. We got to yeah. get people who are more independent, who, who are good, fast thinkers, and that can be like, I'm going to roll with the punches because this month we got to do something different. Some yeah. people and the person we had to get rid of was very much entrenched in here's what I could do. And that's all I do. And that was good for a while for us because where we were at, but where we're at today, that's just not going to work. Yeah. Yeah. And we've done some uh, executive coaching this year. We're probably like in our ninth month of executive coaching, How's something that going? like that. It's going really well. And she gives us a lot of like simple ways to look at these things and challenges some of our beliefs on things. And like even what you said about a person that can do only one thing there might be a place for them in the business. You know, hey, we don't want your ideas. <laughs> Just do this. Right. We don't We don't need your thoughts, your opinion, your ideas, right? Like, just do this one thing. Copy, paste, you know, whatever it is. There's <laughs> there's certainly things like that that need, need to be done. Because then on the other end of the spectrum, you have people who just go out and do whatever they want. We had a guy raise... Um, our PPC budget without asking anybody from 25,000 to 36,000 a month, oops. right? Like, <laughs> uh, you might want you know, to check in with somebody about that. <laughs> um, you know, so, oh, so that's the second. other end of the spectrum. Yeah. Uh Oh, that's right. <laughs> um, and that was another lesson learned on, on the trip. And I think it, it's important to realize that there's that spectrum. Right. There's the people who get frozen and won't do anything. But then there's these people who they just do too much. Right. Like like they don't understand like authority and in the areas where they can make a decision like that. Um, so I think it's important to know, like, 
where do you put that type of person that is going to take risks like that? Right. And where do you put these type of people who are not going to take risks? Um, so maybe you see some examples of that, you know, that that could fit into what you've got going on. Yeah, no, I agree. And, and uh, putting people in the right roles is key. And I actually had this this discussion this morning, somebody that we, we've just brought on as a trainee. And so we thought, let's give her some analytic, uh, some data analysis, because I'm into that right now. Uh, and initially this person said, yeah, I could do some of that. But now that they're in it and seeing exactly what we want them to do from an analytics perspective, you know, brand analytics and all this, this stuff that you have on Amazon that really want to be able to digest, but can't quite just do it the way we want this person. We've realized, no, that's not this person's strength. We're going to put them back on doing catalog stuff. This person is an ex Amazon person that worked okay. with Amazon and understands the issues. And I didn't, and I didn't realize this, but, but this person also handled uh, complaints on the Amazon side. So there's some insights into, yeah. oh, this is really the, the words and phrases you want to use when you're submitting this to Amazon. This That's person reviewed sauce. some of the complaints and FBA shipment uh, reimbursement stuff. And all that I was like, huh? And understanding the mindset, like, okay, we want this person working because we already have somebody that's dedicated to that. We have a dedicated person. That's all she does. We're going to supplement what, what this other person does with, with this new person, this trainee, along with some other catalog based stuff where, you know, as you know, if you're, you're like, you were talking about all this, you know, clicks and analyzing, you know, what's good for the wholesale side. This person is going to assist in, an, in a role kind of like that as well. Yeah. All right. So we got the the ten eighty ten. Right. We'll go ahead and use Gary V's. Yes. Right? Like that's one lesson I learned. Right. Like if you can, if you're a visionary type person struggling with this type of thing, I think that's a great framework because the thing that makes the thing that got a lot of million dollar sellers where they are is that they could do everything. At one point, yes, we did everything. You wore every and, hat. You wore every hat that can only last so long. So now how do you, how do you break that habit of doing everything? You 10, 80, 10 it, right? Like, and you let your team do that 80%, you set the vision, you come back at the end and you tighten that up. Right. Um, and then I think the second part of that is like making sure you got the right people in the right seat. Um, no, we have any other lesson? No, no, no doubt. And I think one of the things is knowing your strengths. So like for me, I hate admin stuff. I really mm -hmm. do. I just, it's some people have no problem. They love sitting behind a computer and just working the spreadsheets and working, you know, the other things like this vendor and that, and, you know, making sure, like, I, you know, oh, this, this paperwork, we got to, you know, I don't like it. I don't like me it either. Not one bit. But if you said, hey, we're going to do a strategy session today, I'm the first one in the door. <laughs> yeah. Let's do it, right? Let's dive in. Let's look at some of the numbers behind the numbers. Let's look at what the trends are. Let's look at what our sales are. I'm there. I'm, I could spend yeah. all day talking about it. So knowing those things that I can really focus, dial in, and I'm really good, doubling down. The other yeah. things, you know what? I'm not a CPA. Okay, so we have an outsourced firm that handles all of our finances, all of our books, all of those types of financial, you know what? Let the experts do what they do. I just heard a word from a guy that I'm going to have on in my, on my podcast uh, next week. He's a, he's a president of Black. He was the president of Blackberry. And he said something to me in our prep interview about domain experts. I asked him, you know, okay. so why did Sony Ericsson and Blackberry fail or some of these other companies? He says, you know, you get a person that comes into a company. It's an Amazon company. They're not an owner operator. They're a finance guy. They're not going to have the domain expertise required to make that flourish. They're going to understand numbers. They're going to understand profit margin and whatnot. Same way in the larger corporate world, you bring in a person that's not a smartphone person, a device person to Apple to run Apple. You know, maybe they were at a big, another big consumer products company and you make them run Apple. They could probably run Apple right into the ground. Because they're not a domain experts in the right. device ecosystem world. You want somebody that understands that world, that's just going to take it to the next level or a new, a new dimension rather than complete, unless you're like completely unprofitable, 
and you need some ma change management kind of thing, domain experts that can understand the problems at hand. Otherwise, things kind of just fall to the way. That's so that's what, like, like I said, uh, I love sales. I love the marketing. I love the give all the other stuff to wherever you can peel stuff off, off, hand it to other people so they could take those things off of you. So your brain is not like, oh, I hate, I hate when I get that. And it's so much more simple too, right? Like when you know, like imagine being away, let's say you implement this, right? And you're away, you're, you take a trip, you let your team handle a bunch of stuff or you let, let's break it down to one person, right? Like if, if that person is only responsible for two things, it's a lot easier to like process whether they're doing a good job or not. But if they're responsible for like 12 different things, well, now you've just really like made things way more complicated to process in your mind. Um, and in theirs more, more importantly. So that's the other thing I've learned. It's like, Hey, what if this person just did this, you know, like what, what if they just did this and you know, we had 10 products to review every month, uh, potentially to, uh, you know, new private label products, right? So you completely outsource product research. You just come in and look at like a qualified list. Um, and we're going to move in that direction as well because it just simplifies something and you know having a pipeline of products to launch just really helps the business and let me ask you something because when you say that i think of a few things like about project management what do you guys use internally uh, and i'm asking you this for a reason because i'm gonna i want to share something but what do you use uh, do you use notion or click up or what are you guys using for that we're pretty heavy on on click up you know but i also use I like to think of it as multiple things like go, you know, Google, Slack, and ClickUp all together. ClickUp for like the long-term things or like a reminder, you know, three months from now. Yep. Um, Slack for that direct kind of back-to-back -back communication. And then I live on on Google Calendar. Like that's where my stuff gets prioritized. Very similar. And we've never talked about this, but I'm, I'm bringing this up for a for reason because uh, we are heavily now into ClickUp. We use Google as well for our, our inter-office chat communications. Um, you know, we have our own, we use Ring Central for our external because we do external communications with, but within the ClickUp side of things, it, it does allow you to put all the pieces together. And just recently, we figured out a way to allow our virtual employees to easily um, get the tasks that they were going to work on when they get notified, because normally if you get a notification, you want to go into ClickUp, you got to read the email. Yeah, that could take you at least, let's just say five minutes. Then you add that action as a task. That's at least another five or 10 minutes. So and then and then it's in ClickUp. So that's between 10 to 20 minutes that just one email will cause that person to do. Yeah, we have found a way to essentially get that in all the way into ClickUp from an email notification all the way to click up it creates the task and all they need to do is see oh, okay this is my task that i've got to do so it could save you some time um in, and especially if you're creating cases uh on the amazon side you have a really neat way to add yourself into a cc using a virtual email inside of ClickUp, and it keeps yep. track of the communication that seller central is sending back and forth which is a horrendous process right now trying to manage cases inside of seller central you can like click up manage that for you yeah uh, but having somebody like you said that role expert do that makes life easier that's one of the things that for me was aging me was yes. seller central <laughs> support i think I, I i aged from i went from 30 to 85 in a matter of a year Oh man, that's such a good way to put it. Yeah. <laughs> ClickUp's good for a lot of those things, man. We use it like for shipment reconciliations, just like keeping track of the, you know, the P, the purchase order. Yeah. Uh, and what shipment it was tied to. And, you know, when you get lost inventory and you have to prove to Amazon that you bought it and blah, 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 all that stuff. We have it all in one little ClickUp section and you can search the purchase order. You can sit, you can search you know, the, uh, bill of lading number, like whatever number you have, or maybe you create 
a unique identifier and you just keep all that stuff linked. Interesting. Um, however you do it, like ClickUp can tie all those pieces together. I haven't used it for, we haven't been using it for purchasing. We've got, we use an ERP system. We use Extensive, okay. which used to be the old Scubana, but that's interesting. I may have to have my, my, my gal who's, uh, manages our ClickUp to look into that. Cause that's a very yeah. interesting way to use it. Yeah, happy to like send over our. We think we have a template for that too that I could share. Well, this this uh, is this out. is why you have two owner operators talk to each other because you give ideas to each other, and hopefully other folks that are listening to us could probably yep. also benefit from that. And that's the power uh, of MDS, right? Like that's that's the real power of MDS because you know, like we're the ones trailblazing this industry, this lifestyle this virtual working, right? Like a lot of people, including myself, including others in the group, we look at things like um, EOS, right? Well, newsflash, EOS was built for people working in buildings. We're not in a building, we're working remotely. Like you can draw inspiration from those things, but you cannot do that 100% and tell me it's working for your e-commerce business that has people working in India, the Philippines, Africa, and all over the world, because it doesn't. Trust me, I've tried. You, you have to add some secret sauce. You're you're not wrong. I was talking to a guy, a uh, guy, he's a former HR executive over at LinkedIn, and he said something very similar to me the other day. He said, you know what? Our way of work for the last 50, 50 60 years is built around the office built around teams inside an office, the communications, the cadence, the workflow. So all of the case management, the MBA studies, the, the coaches, the gurus, all of that has been uh, to support the, how do you build the team within the office? Just like you said. And I heard that from the LinkedIn uh, HR guy. And he says, you know, it's going to take some new muscle memory. Yeah. in order to really look at it completely different because that's the world we're in right now hybrid remote all the rest and so it's going to require like you said trailblazing new experiments setting yourself up differently with a different way of working because there isn't a lot of the tools for what you and i need as an amazon seller some more coming online there aren't a ton when you look at the landscape of coaches and speakers it's still small compared to people talking about how to build a team like 10, 15 years ago. Right, which circles back to kind of where we started, Ro. It's like, how can you focus on those things? How can you blaze that trail if you're answering every Slack mass, every Slack, ma uh, Slack message you're getting from someone on your team, right? Like you've got to be able to put yourself in a position to focus on these real world issues that you cannot plan for the things that are coming up in reality uh that we're facing as we you know blaze our ways into this this new world that we're we're working in that's real right life real life dj real life yes <laughs> <laughs> he keeps it real I man i got a more, more a bunch more in dj Cal, but i love that real life but yes, yes you're right it's it's uh, it's something that we are trailblazing and and i hate that for so many reasons because we're on the on the leading edge and there are no case studies for that there's no right. manual for that and you come across so many things especially like and on the amazon side you know you're going to come across some things they've never seen and all of a sudden you know you're a bad guy for doing this and that you realize oh wait no, that a bot went crazy right and it ran amok on our listing or listings or the software that I need, it doesn't have X, Y, Z, you know, uh, and it's so frustrating when, when I have now you're like, oh, I need two software to do what I want to do. Right. But yes, that's, that's the pain of being a trailblazer. But, but the, the flip side is that when you are a trailblazer, your competitors are always trying to catch up to us. Yeah. Uh, and that's what I've found for me as well is that the competitors will copy kind of what we're doing, but that's what we did three years ago we're already on version four of what we're doing, right. you know, operationally, you know, strategy wise. So it takes them a while to then, and you're like, oh, freaking hey, the BSR is dropping and not helping because these clowns are, and then you're like, wait a minute, like today, somebody said, you know, we could probably create another like variation 
split that variation out, put this other thing that we have been using over here. So and looking at, so your competitors on your heels and then we realized, you know, Hey, there's a variation that where we, we did some stuff over here. Let's try that. And we did, we actually found that we, we, we made a little slightly different product, raised the price. Here's what's crazy. Raised the price. We sold more. Nice. So we're, we're attempting to do the same thing on some other listings that we have to see if we can strike twice. Like great. Yeah create a variation not too different we already have the inventory there raise the price see what happens so I, I i'd love to get back to you on that i know that on this other stuff we i'm just i'm tickled that we could sell more without doing too much more and that was the key yeah that's amazing it's always great to to be testing those things man it, that's like that's the like exciting stuff and and to just have an idea, test it, learn from it, see what happens, uh, and then do it again. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, you know what? There's somebody that I, that would agree with you. He's in the Fs. Here's here's something you haven't heard today. Hit me with it. I'm gonna hit you. I'm gonna, oh yeah, you're gonna like this one. Where is he? Oh goodness, he laughed. Oh, there's only like one little square for him. Uh, uh, you know what? I'm gonna give bad you boy. bad boy. <laughs> I'm gonna give you a little bad boy. But that wasn't the guy I wanted you. To. Oh God, he must have disappeared off of my soundboard. Oh, here he is, way in the corner. Yeah. Boy. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's been a long time since I heard that, man. Yeah. An oldie but Love a goodie. Yes. Yeah. Yes. My boy Flavor Flav, right? Yes, that's exactly right. He's. It's only one little teeny square in my little soundboard, yeah. and so I saw, it was. I'm having a hard time finding him, but Love it. a good way to punctuate and. Uh, exactly what you're saying. Well, I feel like we talked a lot of, about a lot of good things, man. How do we wrap this up for the audience? We talked about the 10-80-10. We talked about uh, you know having the right people in the right seat, letting them do their thing. And I think the third thing is realize that if you're in this world, this e-commerce world, this remote working world, you can only draw from traditional knowledge so much. You've got to be willing to trailblaze a little bit and be confident in yourself, have an idea, put it into action, and then see what happens. A hundred percent. I think you said you said it. Test, test new things. Don't be afraid to test. And something I've been hearing, I've heard it from Gary, I've heard it from other folks that are really successful, just the curiosity, like, hmm, what if yes. we, or can we, or has anybody... And once you start asking yourself those questions, then those experiments start happening. Then you're like, whoa, we killed it there. And we raised the price. Who would have thought? Or, oh, wait, we can't really go in that direction because we got the opposite result, which is just as good as as finding out what works. Because then you find out, no, that doesn't really work. Let's go back to the drawing board and, yes. and see how we can uh, maybe create a new experiment. And that's where the magic happens. That's one thing I've realized. Like I've, I went through a big time of being like a planner and we have to plan this and structure 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 and like you miss out on that when you plan too much you know you really do just have to like let some things go out there let them do their own thing and and not try to control too much of it and just see what happens because you'll learn some great things you'll also screw some things up and maybe that would be something good to talk about on the next podcast row because i've certainly screwed some things up had some bad hires some bad investments that would go into you know thousands and thousands of dollars you know but i also had some huge wins that resulted in like two to three million dollars in additional revenue over the next 12 months because we locked in an exclusive relationship with with a supplier right so there's those wins there's those losses and i think the <laughs> I think the key is is making sure that that win outweighs all those losses and and you just have to be willing to take risks uh to do that like i'm not even gonna add to it a hundred percent i agree with what you said all right well we'll see you guys next week thanks for listening ro it was great having you on man thank I'm you nick thanks for, for chit-chatting with me